in the court. We now stand the trial of the United States government, the UN, and international organizations for their actions in Africa. But the Democrat and Republican twins could not agree on what crimes to charge them with, so they will each present their side of the story separately. How does the defendant plea? Your Honor, we the government are innocent. However, should you make erroneous conclusions, we have CIA snipers standing by to persuade you. Your Honor, I argue that the government's response was inefficient to the Congo. This all could have been prevented. Your Honor, I argue that the government was corrupt with its response to the Congo. Private U.S. corporations profited from the bloody conflict. You've got to slow down, boy. I don't even know what the Congo War is. Now, in the last episode, we learned about the Rwandan genocide. I assume that this is similar. Right, in part one, which if you haven't seen, you can click the link in the description, we learned about the violence of the Hutus killing the Tutsis in a genocide. These two groups have such tension that when the Los Angeles Bloods and Crips heard about it, they said, Damn, can't y'all get counseling or something? Yeah, dog, do trust falls. Can't y'all motherfuckers talk it out? After the genocide happened, the United States government decided to altruistically help the Tutsis by arming them. We coordinated with their Tutsi leader, Paul Kagame. Your Honor, I argue that the government's response was too slow. Bill Clinton's administration armed the Tutsis after the genocide was already done. So after everybody was already dead, they then gave them the tools to defend themselves. You might as well in 2019 FedEx JFK's family with duct tape and bulletproof vests. Stay vigilant. Shouldn't you be happy they got anything? Because nothing says left-wing guilt like arming someone after everyone they already love is dead. Shit, at that point, the only use in the Bill Clinton pistols is to sound off a race of the killers fleeing the scene. America armed me. Run. I'm trying to beat my one mile time. America armed them slower than a no-skin at Junk Junction. What's a no-skin? Is that racist? I believe they're referencing a video game called Fortnite, which should be understood because attractive women do not watch this show. And we tried to help the Tootsies as quick as possible. Your Honor, I argue not that the weapons were given out too slowly, but that America didn't monitor the use of these weapons. In this case, the Tutsis, the previous victims of the genocide, once armed, massacred their previous attackers, the Hutus. You call this humanitarian aid? Ah! America gave me humanitarian aid. Ah! You shot me in the fucking dick. Blessed is American humanitarian aid. Shot in the dick. Ha! Huh. Like I said, attractive women don't watch this show. Order in the court. Keep it civil, ya hyenas. So what happened next? The Hutus didn't stick around long after the Tutsis got American weapons. Yes, the Hutus fled to the Congo. So here's Rwanda, where the genocide happened, and they fled to the Congo right next to it. Now, as you may have remembered from our previous episode on the IMF, the Congo has in charge Mobutu. Mobutu cooperated with the IMF loan programs. Mobutu is so corrupt, he makes Bernie Madoff look like Mother Teresa, which shouldn't surprise you then that Ronald Reagan armed him. Remind me, what did Mobutu do again? Mass murder, you know, the usual IMF favorites. The IMF is like a woman who's been divorced seven times. I just can't find a guy who won't betray me. You wanna get together? I'm confused. You're saying America armed both sides of the war. Yes, exactly. America armed both sides. This video is like finding out there's no Santa Claus. All right, gather around, children. So the first Congo War is Kagame in Rwanda versus Mobutu in the Congo. Ronald Reagan armed Mobutu for national security purposes. How giving him automatic weapons makes us safer is beyond me. 
Mobutu couldn't even be trusted with a Pez dispenser. And Bill Clinton armed Kagame. You're, You're nuts, nuts to support both sides. sides. So the next time you see two players outside the club fighting over the same girl, you'll understand the Rwandan genocide. America loves me. Nah, she was looking at me. Plus the IMF funded both Kagame and Mobutu to use slave labor to mine minerals, then praise them for raising their GDP. You realize the entire concept of the IMF is slavery to begin with. I can't have slavery going on with the money I rob from hardworking Americans. Why did America want to get rid of Mobutu if they put him in power? Because Mobutu started abusing human rights. Just kidding, America doesn't care about human rights. It's because Mobutu started refusing American mining corporations. Corporations want to purposely destabilize Africa so its rich natural resources can be abused. In this specific region of Rwanda and the Congo, they mine cobalt, which is used to make smartphone batteries. 2,000 Africans died mining cobalt. I don't care about that. I'm down to two bars. After that war, was there peace? Nope. There's a reason it's called the First Congo War. It led to, you guessed it, the Second Congo War. So in the First Congo War, it's Mobutu versus Kabila and Kagame. When Mobutu lost, Kagame went on to fight Kabila in the Second Congo War. And again, we armed both sides. I'm convinced they armed people with the last name of K, so that this way Americans are confused and don't realize both sides are armed. Ah, oh, they're just giving money to the K guy. That's fine. I don't understand. Explain it using simple letters. All right, we're gonna break it down with simple letters. First Congo War. Mobutu, M, versus Kabila and Kagame, K1 and K2. Mobutu loses. Kabila, K2, takes over the Congo. Now, Second Congo War, it's K1 versus K2. This is so ridiculous that when the women of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills heard about the Congo, they said, Now this is pointless drama. How could anybody squabble about that? My boy, aren't you worried that since you're fighting against corruption, that they'll kill you? If I make it clear I'm an enemy of the deep state, they'll arm me. You're acting like the whole thing is some grand conspiracy theory, when in fact the IMF and the World Bank disagree with each other and squabble all the time over which groups should get loans. I'm glad the World Bank and the IMF disagree and fight, because they get a taste of their own medicine. The Fed funds both sides of that fight. Order in the court. I object. Shut the fuck up! Who else funded the Congo War? Rwanda helps form local rebel groups to fight Kabila, including the Congolese Rally for Democracy. Now this group is confusingly labeled because it has the name Congo in it, but it's actually a Rwandan back group. But rather than Rally for Democracy, this group engaged in heinous war crimes, including rape. So it shouldn't surprise you then, Citigroup illegally loans money to the Congolese Rally for Democracy. What's your source on that? Well, the UN's own research staff. A UN Security Council research report from Kofi Annan on April 12, 2001, which I've linked in the description. How can Citigroup approve a loan to the Congolese militia at a time when Africans in America are being refused loans based on discrimination? By that logic, to avoid discrimination, Africans should walk into Citigroup branches with a machete. Give me a bank loan, you fucking cunt! Kabila dies. His son, also named Kabila, that's not confusing at all, takes over the conflict. The IMF and the World Bank fund Kabila, including loans from Citigroup. So do you understand? Citigroup funded both the rebels and the government they seek to overthrow. Now an official from the government would say this. I'm very skeptical that Citigroup would arm militia fighters. How did the flow of funds go? No, 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 this is what they did. Citigroup gave money to a fake financial front who then went in turn to fund the Congolese militia. They couldn't do it directly through a Citibank branch, 
Because you have ever seen their customer service. I mean, nobody who's fucking ready to fight in the Congo is going to wait for 20 minutes on hold while you check their customer account ID. I mean, maybe that's why they're fighting. I can't take this customer service. I need an Uzi. So you agree with him? I agree banks were involved, but I think the biggest problem is Halliburton. Halliburton built a base on the Congo-Rwanda border. I mean, come on. See, you only thought Halliburton cared about oil. They'll kill for scraps of pebbles. Here we go with the Halliburton is evil again. What's your source on this? News sources censor like Tinder. If they go to the left, you can't even contact them. Will you please stop it with the Tinder jokes every episode? I can't get any matches. You're a politician. They know your profile's fake. My source on that is House Representative Cynthia McKinney's hearing on April 10th, 2001. How can you say that liberals censored dissent when her hearing went something like this? I've placed Halliburton's Death Star plans in this R2-D2. You must get this data to the Senate. Why would all these groups fund war? To control the Congo's resources. Let's not forget about Bush Sr., who owned significant stakes in Barrick Gold and was an advisor to the board. Then once Kabila took control of the Congo, Barrick Gold opened a significant amount of mines. You pea brain clown. You're not gonna mention the Clinton's advisors being on Barrick Gold's advisory board. They're all involved. Bill Clinton said, we can't offer humanitarian aid to Rwanda because it get us tied down and involved in the country's politics. But yet we can build 20 year mining projects. Should be no surprise that Bill Clinton has trouble understanding the concept of commitment. And the real irony is politicians funding gold companies. Listen, for you commoners, paper money is fine. Conservatives watching this at home are like, man, I bought Barrick Gold stock to avoid Fed wars. Now I'm funding them. To summarize, the Congo Wars are two conflicts after the Rwandan genocide. The first Congo War was between the Tutsis getting revenge on the Hutus. The second Congo War was between two Tutsi leaders fighting over power after one betrayed the other. Now, America and the IMF did fund both sides of both conflicts. However, it was not to purposely promote violence, as some might quickly suggest. The IMF and the World Bank gave money to both sides to develop the region and promote prosperity. To suggest that we purposely induced violence is ridiculous because there were many years in between the different sides being given money. I mean, come on, you've never trusted someone and then had them betray you years later? To summarize, I disagree. I think America armed both sides of the Congo Wars to purposely destabilize the region through perpetual violence so that its rich natural resources could be abused by corporate greed. Barrick Gold abused the Congo's resources, as well as Halliburton built a base on the Rwandan side of the border. This draws parallels to what America does in the Middle East of using divide and conquer of pitting Sunnis against Shiites. To summarize, I agree that this situation is corrupt, but I disagree that it has anything to do with actual capitalism. Instead, Rwanda and the Congo both grew under the control of the IMF and the World Bank. So if anything, this demonstrates the failure of government socialist planning. It has nothing to do with corporate greed, when in fact, Government altruism can do a lot of harm by throwing gobs of money at corrupt government officials with no feedback loop like there would be if there were customers or stockholders in actual capitalism. I will now give my verdict. I have heard much evidence from both sides on America's foreign policy. Taking into consideration that I would like to work in mainstream media one day, I now give a verdict of not guilty. You are innocent.